Okay. Hi guys. So if you don't know me, my name is Brooke. And today I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Jerry Garcia. So this is for a leadership project and we had to pick an influential leader in history and kind of do some research. So naturally I picked Jerry. And if you don't know, he is the lead singer and guitarist for The Grateful Dead. And so, just to start out with the basics, he was born near San Francisco um, on August 1st, 1942. He lived around there for most of his adolescent life. Um, he went to a military camp for a little bit, you know, because he didn't have the best reputation. Um, he kind of got into a lot of fights, and he skipped class a whole bunch. So his mom sent him off to military camp. When he came back, um, the first band he joined was at his Nolly High School, and um, it was named The Chords. And so this was kind of the start of his music career. You know, he did play piano growing up. He kind of was in a very musical environment when he was little. So, you know, I bet that has something to do with what he did with his life. Okay, on to why I think Jerry Garcia is an influential leader in history. So we studied this packet, um, the six leadership styles, and when you should use them. And out of these six leadership styles, I definitely think he was an affiliative leader. And what this, why I think this is just because he did create such an emotional bond with his bandmates. The band was super close, and also with their fans. Their fans was a, their fans were a huge part of their music. And you know, the Grateful Dead made their music for their fans, and the fans kind of saw this. And this is good in a business perspective too, because. That's when you're selling your music to these people, like, you want them to be involved. You want them to love what you're doing. And there was also an article published by Forbes, published on Forbes.com by John Clark. It's called The Grateful Dads, Jerry Garcia, The Steve Jobs of Rock and Roll. And in this article, he uses a term um, called benevolent, but benevolent depotism. And what this kind of means, like, it kind of reiterates the idea of the affiliative leader but how he kind of used his power and his position to benefit the people instead of himself, which I think is really great. Okay, also in this article, it says that kind of the band members accepted that he was irreplaceable to the band. You know, he kind of made the Grateful Dead the Grateful Dead, as well as all of the other players as well, but um, he was kind of their leader. And so they kind of all accepted he was irreplaceable and they all kind of trust him. And, you know, all was fair as long as he, you know, didn't disagree. And, you know, I think this is really important as a leader. Like, you should be open to other people's thoughts and opinions, and you shouldn't just disregard them just because they may, you know, not be as well-versed as you are. But everyone has great ideas, and you should listen to... Well, maybe not everyone has great ideas. But, you know, you should definitely take into account other people's um, thoughts. Okay, and also in this article, um, John Clark references another writer um, by the name of Cutter, Cutler. And this is a quote from Cutler, and it says, The debt had the ability to remain light on their feet. You know, change its approach when the systems were failing and to alter their strategic, strategic plan at a moment's notice. And um, they kind of committed to the collective upon rather than um, the pursuit of the naked self-interest. And so I think this is definitely really important. And again, using the collective to your advantage instead of just the individual. And so who this affected? Like I said before, this affected so many people around the world. Like he influenced a whole genre, not even genre, but a time period of music. So many people were just going crazy over this. And there was an interview published on Rolling Stone, and it was with Garcia, and there's a quote. He says, I was thinking about the dead and their success, and I thought that maybe this idea of transforming principle has something to do with it. Because when we get on stage, what we really wanted to happen is we wanted to, we wanted to be transformed from ordinary players into extraordinary, into extraordinary ones, like forces larger than consciousness. And I think this is a really powerful quote, quote, and, you know, I think it has, definitely has a lot to do with their excess. Like, they came in and they were different. They had a different sound, and they had such a strong connection with the people they were playing for. It was ridiculous. 
But, um, so they definitely had such a large impact on the fans' lives. And even today, like, I know kids who have parents who just, like, were total deadheads and just followed them out and wherever, whenever, and went to so many shows. And, um, yeah, I think that's really great to have such an emotional connection with the people you're making music for. Okay, but yeah, this kind of ends my video, and I... Hope this kind of makes you want to listen to some of their music and have the connection that um, a lot of people have with their band. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're excited and all of these links will be after this. But thanks. Bye.